When God tells you that you have done wrong, don't you argue with him? Don't you make any excuses? There are two things that you need to do. Do you know what those things are? Join me for this week's Sunday School Lesson. Thank you for joining me for this week's Sunday School Lesson. Our Sunday School Lesson this week is titled, Jonah Repents. Coming from the selected scripture from the second chapter of Jonah, starting at the first verse and going through the 10th verse. If you aren't already subscribed to the New Found Faith channel, make sure that you subscribe today. Make sure that you set the alert notification so that you don't miss a lesson like this one. Please like and please share this week's lesson with somebody somewhere. Our Sunday School lesson this week, starting off there in the first verse of the second chapter of Jonah, it opens with Jonah in the belly of the great fish. Let us remember from our Sunday School lesson last week, we ended on the note of Jonah being thrown overboard, cast into the sea, where the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And he will be in this fish for three days, three nights. And so we'll see there, in the opening of our lesson today that Jonah, he's there in the belly of that great fish. We will see that he is in prayer. We'll see that he has, that he is praying. Again, God, he sent a message to Jonah, right? We saw this in our Sunday school lesson last week. When Jonah, when he fled from the assignment, the task that God had given to him, when he got on that boat to go to Tarshish, the Lord sent a message through, through a storm. And so, that message was God's rebuke because Jonah, he had did wrong. Jonah, he had disobeyed, right? And so again, like I said in the opening, there are two things that you can do when God rebukes you. One of those things is certainly not to argue with them. One of those things is certainly not to make excuses. You are not in the right. When God comes and says that you have done wrong, you have done wrong. When God rebukes you, you should acknowledge. You should heed that rebuke. Acknowledge, make corrections. What we see Jonah doing here in prayer is acknowledging and making corrections. So we'll see there when we take a look at the second verse that Jonah, he cried out because of his affliction. What exactly was his affliction? Some of us will say, well, he's in this belly. He's in the belly of this great, this, this great fish. But let's understand that's that's not his affliction. God, again, he prepared for Jonah to be in the belly of that great fish. That's, that's not his, his affliction. That's, that's not his trouble. So what was his affliction? What was troubling Jonah? Well, what was it that caused him to, to flee the assignment that was given to him by the Lord? His anger, his dislike, in fact, his outright hatred of the Ninevites, the people who were of Nineveh, the Assyrians, his afflictions. Let's be very clear here. His anger towards the, the Ninevites, it again, it caused him to disobey. It caused him to run from the Lord. And Jonah, he needs help with that. Because as we have seen in the fifth chapter of Matthew's gospel, in the 44th verse, we are supposed to love our enemies. We know the great commandment. We know the first commandment from the Lord is to love him with our whole heart. And we know that the second commandment from the Lord is that we are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Our neighbor can be anybody. Our neighbor isn't always someone that supports us. Our neighbor isn't always someone that helps us. Our neighbor isn't always someone that likes us. But Jesus, he tells us to love our enemies, to do good to those that, that hate us, to pray for those that, that spitefully use us and, and for those that, that persecute us. And so Jonah, we see here that he knows what his problem is. And we see here that he needs help and that he's praying to God for that help. And so we'll see there in that second verse as well, that Jonah, Jonah he, he speaks of where it was that he was in his life physically. He says that, you know, I'm in this belly of the great fish, right? But we'll see there in that second verse that he was praying, he said, from Sheol. Sheol, if you don't know what that is, Sheol is the place that we would call hell or Hades. I'm pretty sure all of you are familiar with those terms. Sheol is uh, essentially a purgatory. It is a place where souls after death, uh, the soul awaits the final judgment. 
And essentially, those who go to Sheol, those who are in purgatory in Hades, they aren't with God today. They didn't die in, in the grace of Christ. They, they're awaiting their judgment to be cast away from God's presence for, for eternity. And so Jonah, he was likening being in the belly of this great fish here to essentially being dead and awaiting his judgment. Because again, Jonah recognized that he had did wrong, right? And so he's essentially, I'm in this belly of this great fish. I'm awaiting judgment is what Jonah was saying there. And so we'll see Jonah, he describes what physically happened to him as we take a look at the third verse there. After he was thrown overboard, we'll see that Jonah, he spoke of how God's billows and how the Lord's waves, how they passed over him. Jonah in the fifth verse there, he spoke about how the deep, how the deep that is talking about the sea, how the sea closed around him and, and the weeds that's in the sea, Jonah said that they wrapped around his head. And then he spoke to how he went down to the moorings of the mountains. That's talking about the, the anchoring points of, of a boat or the anchoring depths, I should say, of a boat there. So we're seeing these physical descriptions. We again have to remember that Jonah, he was thrown overboard in, in the midst of, of this storm and he's physically he's telling us literally what he what he went through how the waves was you know crashing and he was sinking in in the deep sea and deep sinking down to the depths of where the boats would anchor when he was swallowed by by the great fish those are physically things that again jonah that he went through but again even though we see jonah speaking about what he physically went through there is a figure of speech here to where we can see where Jonah may have also been talking about his his spiritual state as well. If we go back and we, we take a look at that third verse, for example, there. Yes, again, we'll see how Jonah, he spoke about, again, God's billows and waves passing over him. But this is something that reminds me of, of what James, what he wrote in, in his letter. If we take a look, turn with me over to the first chapter of James and take a look at at the sixth verse, because we'll see where James, he wrote about uh, needing to turn to the Lord, needing to pray to God, but he, he spoke about not doubting and, and having faith. We'll see there in the sixth verse that James, he likened those that doubted the Lord to being like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Sounds familiar? Again, Jonah said, I, I was in the billows, the billows, the waves, they, they passed over me. Jonah, he was literally tossed about in the sea. We'll take a look at the seventh and the eighth verse there in the first chapter of James. James said that such a one lacks faith. They shouldn't expect to receive anything from the Lord. Should Jonah have expected to receive anything from God when he disobeyed the Lord? Absolutely not, right? And so James, he said that such a person, look at this, James said that they are double-minded and they are unstable in all their ways. Do you think that Jonah, do you think that he may have been double-minded? Do you think that Jonah may have been unstable in his ways when again, God had given him an assignment and Jonah said, no, I'm not gonna do that, Lord, because I have to go and preach to people that, that may have killed my loved ones, that may have killed friends of mine. It's again possible that the people of Nineveh, the Assyrians, that they may have even brought him harm as well. And Jonah was, he became double-minded to where it's like, I know that I'm supposed to do God, what, what he tells me to do. But then he said, I'm not going to do what, what he tells me to do because I can't go and I can't minister and I can't preach to them. So he may have been double-minded at one point in time, but then he made up his mind. And, and let's be clear. He became unstable in his ways. When the child of God is stable in their way, guess what they're doing? They're certainly not disobeying the Lord, right? When we are stable in our ways, we are walking by faith. We are being obedient to, to what it is that God is, has commanded of us or has instructed us to do. When we are unstable, we are moving and shifting away from the Lord. And, and when we are unstable in our ways, do we think that the Lord should reward us? Do you really think that? There 
many people that think that today think that they can disobey God and that God should should make it just sunshine and rainbows. There should never be any trials or tribulations. We should never have any storms that come our way, even though we choose to be disobedient. Does that, does that really sound right? So again, let's get back to Jonah here. Jonah, I believe that he was unstable in his ways because he turned from the Lord and he tried to flee from God. He thought that he could run and hide from God. No child of God should ever think that way. You can't run and hide from God. How can you hide from one who's omnipotent, omniscient and omnipresent, meaning that he's all powerful, all knowing and everywhere at all times. We should know better than that. We should know better than being disobedient. So why do we continue? To disobey. So Jonah, he doubted the Lord again there, and we'll see there in the sixth verse that even though he had sunk to anchoring depths again physically, I believe that Jonah there in that sixth verse that he recognized that he had sunk to a very dark place in his soul. And so Jonah, we'll see there, just taking a look back at the fourth verse, just talking about what it was uh, spiritually that he was going through, even though, again, we see him speaking of what he went through physically. Again, like I said, I believe that there is a figure of speech here to where we see him talking about his spiritual state. And so if we take a look back at that fourth verse, Jonah, he said that even though he had sunk to such a dark place, being cast out of God's sight, Jonah was saying that he was in a dark place. Look at what he said here. He said that he would look again toward God's holy temple. So when one reaches such a dark place in their soul, there are two options that, that they can choose between. They can either continue in that dark place or they can rise again, right? Should we continue in darkness when we acknowledge that we are in a dark place when we again when god rebukes us when he tells us that we have done wrong should we continue in the wrong or should we make make a change jonah he has been rebuked by the lord and he has acknowledged that that he was in the wrong he has acknowledged that 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 he turned from the lord that, that he ran from the Lord. We saw that in our lesson last week. And again, we, we essentially see it here in our lesson today, where again, Jonah, he acknowledges that he has, that he's having trouble. He acknowledges that he's had, that he's having an affliction here that has caused him to turn from, from the Lord here. And so Jonah in acknowledging, it doesn't seem like he has this desire to continue to be in this dark place, right? Because again, if we take a look at that for a verse, Jonah said that he would look again towards God's holy temple. So it seems like Jonah wants out of that dark place, that that he wants to get past his trouble, that he not only wants to get past his trouble, that he wants to rise above those troubles as well. So again, he had two options. All of us, we have two options as well today that we choose between, because again, all of us are going to have those points in our life to where we disobey because none of us are, are perfect. Even though we are a child of God, even though we have committed ourselves to the Lord, we still are fully able of being disobedient. And God will get on you. God will rebuke you. There are two things that we should do. And again, it's certainly not argue with the Lord because we are never in the right when it comes to the Lord and, and trying to say, oh, no, 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 no. When God rebukes us, we have done it. So we shouldn't argue. We shouldn't make, we shouldn't make excuses. We should acknowledge and then we should make corrections. Does it seem that Jonah is doing that? We'll see there that Jonah, he said there in the sixth verse, just taking a look back at that, he said, the earth with this bars closed behind me forever. He said, yet you have brought up my life from the pit. So let's be clear here. This prayer that Jonah is praying, it's not a prayer from one who's double minded. It is not a prayer from one who's unstable in his ways, is it? Again, Jonah, he had 
he had turned from the Lord and, and again, he had become unstable. But now we see a Jonah who has been rebuked by the Lord. And instead of ignoring God's rebuke, we see that Jonah is heeding God's rebuke. When God rebukes you, is that what you should do? Absolutely. So Jonah, he again acknowledged that when his soul fainted, we'll see there in the seventh verse, he said, I remember. He said that he remembered the Lord. And again, Jonah, he prayed there. God rebuked Jonah and Jonah heeded the Lord's rebuke. And, and again, I, I've brought this up recently when I have taught this lesson in church. I don't think I've mis mentioned this while recording the lessons, but a while ago, I think it was last year or maybe it was the year before, I did a Bible study to where I talked about these steps to forgiveness. And there are three, essentially three steps to take uh, when it comes to forgiveness. The one who is wronged should give a rebuke. They should say that they have been wrong and then they should offer the correction so that the person that did the wrong has the choice of either heeding the rebuke, acknowledging that they did wrong, making the corrections, or they can choose to continue to do wrong. After that, then the one who was wronged, if the one that did the wrong chose to make the corrections and, and was genuine in it, that person, the one that was wrong, should move to forgive, show grace. So we have Jonah in this position, right? to where God clearly has rebuked him. And so the shoe was put on his foot now. He either ignores God rebuke, continue in darkness, or he heeds it. Jonah clearly has acknowledged, and we see here that he's making corrections because he is turning back to faith and, and moving in faith here. So Jonah's prayer, again, let's be very clear about this, Jonah's prayer is now a prayer that is of faith. It is now a prayer of hope. The reason why it is a prayer of faith and hope here is because Jonah is acknowledging his role. He's turned to God and this prayer has become a prayer of repentance, a prayer of correction. Jonah acknowledging that he needs help. Jonah acknowledging that in order for him to correct his way, that he needs the Lord to lift him up. And he's saying here that God, you have done that for me. Even though he was saying that he was in, in, in Sheol, even though he was physically in the belly of this great fish, he said, God, you heard me in the belly of this great fish. And you have lifted me up from that dark place where I was in my soul. And so Jonah, he then said there in the eighth verse, he said, those who regard worthless idols, they forsake their own mercy. I want you to pay very close attention to, to the word mercy there, because Jonah, he, in that verse was acknowledging that his own mercy came from the Lord, that God was his mercy. Is God your mercy today? He should be. God is love. God is grace. God is mercy. God is salvation. He is all of those things for us. And, and we should not forsake that. We need God's grace. We need his love. We need his mercy. We need his forgiveness. We need his, his salvation so that we can make it through this life. We don't have the strength. We don't have the power. We don't have the might to overcome our own sin. Listen to me. Sin will weigh you down. It will burden you. Sin will crush you. And so we need God's help so that we can attain the righteousness that so many of us desire to attain. And I wanna be clear about this. I'm not talking about self-righteousness. I'm talking about the righteousness, the, the perfection that is of the Lord. If you desire that, again, you need God. You can't do it on your own. You need God to lift you up from, from that pit, okay? And Jonah, he said there in the ninth verse, Jonah said no more sinking for him. Look at that. Jonah said that he would sacrifice to the Lord with the voice of thanksgiving and that he would pay what he vowed. What was it that Jonah had vowed? Jonah had vowed to be of faith. 
he was a prophet. Let's let's not forget this. Jonah was a servant of the Lord. He was a he was a prophet. And so after that, we'll see there in the tenth verse that Jonah he was spat out on dry land, and we'll see that he was given again a second chance to make correction. So Jonah's repentance it came from a couple of factors that we'll see there. It came from faith. It came from him uh, recognizing where he could have ended up. He recognized that he was in a dark place and he recognized that he needed to get out of that dark place, right? And so again, like I said, that's something that all of us, we need, we truly, and I hope that that's something that you take away from our lesson today. We need to get ourselves out of a dark place because again, all of us at some point in time, we can end up in a dark place by turning away from the Lord. And, and again, we can fall into sin. None of us, we are perfect. And so when God rebukes us, when he comes and when he tells us that we have done wrong and that we need to turn to him, two things, acknowledge it, accept that you have done wrong, okay? And then after that, make the corrections. Yes, be prayerful, move by faith, and again, depend on the Lord to lift you up from that dark place. God, he certainly will do that. Okay. All right. So that is our Sunday school lesson this week. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll like this video. I hope that you'll share this lesson with somebody somewhere. And again, if you aren't already subscribed to the Newfound Faith channel, make sure that you do so today. Hey there. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday school lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. And if you have any questions, if you have any comments, don't be afraid to leave a question. Don't be afraid to leave a comment as well. And again, if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following the Newfound Faith channel. Make sure you hit the alert bell so that you don't miss any of our wonderful videos that we have here on our YouTube page.